Well, it's back in the woods with me. I just got dropped off. Um, I was supposed to, uh, I was supposed to stick around until 11 o'clock, but I don't know. I miss the woods. I mean, I get, I get antsy. You know what I mean? So it's actually nine o'clock right now. I'm supposed to do 14, but I feel like hiking. It's supposed to be 85 degrees today. I may do a little bit more. Um, I have no reservations about camping. If I'm not mistaken, about four miles, about four miles after I pass this uh, Dick Stop Dick Stop shelter, there's a there's a a high clearing, and it looks really pretty. So I'm thinking I may do that. So today may end up being like a 20 mile day. Um, I asked the uh, I got a ride in from the groundskeeper. I just kept. Um, I kept calling because last night I called to confirm my, my ride from Yellow Cab and they raised the price $2. So uh, that's just shady for me. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. And so I talked to a groundskeeper that works there and I just gave him five bucks to take me up. And the five bucks was more of a courtesy, like a, like a tip for him doing it because it was, it was going to be double any other way. And, um, and that's it. As I said before, didn't see no hikers. Yesterday, I didn't see any hikers today. I'll keep you posted. This is not something I want to harp on, but I'll tell you this. When I'm showing you shelters and this, that, and the other, watch how many people are around me. See it so, so you can get a feel of, wow, where is everybody? That kind of thing. All right, I'm getting to work out here. Brief look at the layout before me. Shelters are really close. You got one two miles and then five miles from there. Yeah. I don't know if you can appreciate uh, the massiveness of these trees. Now I'm from California so I've been to Yosemite. I know what a redwood looks like but I feel no less dwarfed. I mean 80 feet. These things are tall dude. And they're all blooming so you can imagine with a canopy 80 feet over you when it when it rains you really don't need to don your rain gear unless it's just coming down hard and it sounds worse than what it is but it's beautiful out here let's take a look at this shelter shall we looks like somebody left some trail magic in here Look at this thing, it's a cathedral. Let's see some food that's left behind. People do this often. This is why you want to check out the shelter for no other reason than to inspect. Pretty cool, huh? Out here. So, moral of the story is, it doesn't hurt to do a recon. Go down to the shelter, see what's up. Uh, had, had I not go, had gone into town, what I normally do is when people leave food like that, I'll just either stop and eat in place or resupply from what they have or what I did. I saw what I wanted and since I was already resupplied, I swapped out. Which means, for example, there was two Pop-Tarts on the table. I was like, okay, what can I get rid of in exchange for two Pop-Tarts? I go into my pack and I start dropping some crackers. Just trade it out, wait for weight. That way, I'm not overbearing myself. And it's a, it's a trade out. Somebody that comes behind me will still have something to choose from. And the fact that they don't know what was there before, no harm, no foul. It just gets recycled in. So that's what I did. I swapped some stuff out. And uh, there you go. So this, uh, this, this stretch is weird because you got shelters every four miles. I just left that one. Five miles from here, there's another shelter. Five miles from there, there's another shelter, Dick's Dome. And then, uh, and then you got that long stretch. And one last thing, 
there was a person down there. They were like coming down and they're southbound. Since I know they're southbound, he knows what's ahead of me. So since I know I plan on staying at the Bears Den Hostel, naturally I inquired about it. He said he stayed there and he said it was a good experience. And I recommend that when you get, when you see somebody with news up ahead, grill them. I mean, it's not like you're a detective. It's not like you're asking personal questions, but especially if you plan on staying at a place and they just walk through it, ask about it. Could be, they got bed bugs. It could be anything. And you won't know that, you know? And so it's just best to inquire. And so he had nothing but good things to say about it. And I'm even more amped about going there. So, all right, out here. By the way, the southbound hiker said he started from Bull and Springs, Pennsylvania. So naturally my question was, have you seen many through hikers? He said maybe, maybe two or three every now and then. So what that tells me, well, he ended by saying, oh, I hear there's a lot of people behind you. I just raised my eyebrows on that one. Anything, well, anyway, what that tells me is the road is pretty much clear ahead. So there shouldn't be any crowds or nothing like that. The way I look at it, most of the crowds that I'll be seeing now will be southbounders, especially in June. Um, southbounders and day hikers out here. This is a strange part of the trail, always strange really. You come out of the woods and then you walk down the street, you go over these overpass and then you're literally walking in a neighborhood and then the trail turns into somebody's backyard, but not before coming across an apple tree or some kind of tree. It's like cherries or berries or something. I'll let you see it here in a second when I turn off. Sign says Walker Ridge Private Drive, plain as day. And you're just walking up the street. Next you get a sign pointing you to a parking lot that pops out of nowhere. And right here, right across the street, I don't know what this is. This could be a bed and breakfast, I don't know. But uh, I'm coming across the, uh, where I want to tell you about the, the tree. It looks like there's some trail magic there. Or it could be my eyes playing tricks on me. Yeah, there you go. Here's a bench. There's something bearing the name Trail Magic. Unfortunately, it's upside down and empty. Foot trail. And it looks like you're back in the woods with that white place out here. Yeah, I skipped from uh, the front row. All right, I'm not gonna go down to the shelter because it's too far, but I'm on my way to Dick's Knob now, five miles out. Right. It's kind of crowded at that junction where the shelter was or at least where you go to the shelter. Um, hindsight being 2020, I realize I kind of contradicted what I said earlier. Um, if you've been following my videos, you know that I don't go to every single shelter. If I'm on a mission, I'm on a mission. Um, I didn't mind going into Checkpoint Alpha, the first shelter. Uh, to be honest with you, I wanted to use the privy. Just so happens there was goodies on the table and it reminded me to tell you. So, if you want to take the time to go down to the shelters, sometimes there's something there for you. 
Other times, you know, you go down there to get water or whatever. Um, there was a day hiker there and I asked her, hey, is the shelter far? She said yes. Somebody said no. I split the difference. I'm not going. <laughs> I'll just assume it's too far. And, you know, I don't want to take me off my off my uh, beaten path, you know. Ain't no sense in walking a half a mile down just to come back up, and I really didn't have to do anything. Um, I'm five miles out from Dick's Dome. Uh, now that I think about it, that shelter is a little bit off the trail. Um, it's unique, though, so I'll go down, and I'll give you footage of it. Uh, it's 1.41 right now, and I feel good, so I may end up doing another 20-something day. If I'm not mistaken, there's another shelter nine miles? Something. I, I can't say for certain, but I always had the intention of camping somewhere past Dick's Dome. So I'll either camp at some point, or if the sun goes down on me, um, or if, if the sun stays with me, hike on in to the shelter. I remember what I did in 2012. I ate dinner here, and at around 5.30, 6 o'clock, I just packed up and left. And I did go to the next shelter, but I ended up night hiking. The sun beat me. But with it being 1.45 right now, I know for certain, no matter how far it is, I can go down there. And then hike on out and know that I can hit that shelter by 6, 7 o'clock. I can do the miles later, but I'm thinking it'll probably end up being maybe a 22. I mean, was, you don't need to look at me. I'll show you the trail. It'll probably end up being another 21, 22 mile day. So, um, with it was supposed to be, I already told you I'm going into uh, Bears Den Hostel. Okay, I know why I never stayed because it was always inconvenience and inconvenient for me to do so which means like let's say I'm hiking and I'm 10 miles in and then I come across the hostel and I'll say oh it's too early to stop hiking and so I just don't do it but this time since I planned for it I'm I'm gonna do it so Bears Den Hostel is 18 miles from Dick's Dome so I was planning to stay at Dick's Dome and then do 18 miles and stay at Bears Den well since I'm going further uh, tomorrow will probably end up being anywhere from a 10 to 14 mile day into the hostel is what I'm thinking that's what I'm looking at because I could tell you right now I'm not gonna stay at Dick Stone so that's where we are right now this is just me trying to keep you posted out here I passed more day hikers today than I gotta tell you since I've been on the trail it, uh, it's a testament of how tame this stretch is and why you can do 20 miles anyway um, I've seen a lot of dogs I've seen at least six dogs just today and it just dawned on me to tell you something when I see a dog at a distance I whistle okay I'm whistling for two reasons one to determine the temperament of the dog so that he knows I'm that he's not surprised he knows I'm coming and two so the owner knows that hey somebody's in the area somebody just whistled at my dog if so, if the dog is mean or if it means anything, you know, he'll let you know right there with the barking and then the owner can can grab him. What you don't want to do is go sneaking up on dogs. So, just a little tidbit out here. Alright, 3 o'clock. This is Dick's Dome Shelter. The next shelter is 9 miles down. That's a ways. Anyway... Let me show you this shelter out here. This shelter was always so unique. A little octagon. I mean, believe it or not, I don't even think three people can fit in there, but I'll show it to you. See that there? Hello. Hi. How you doing? Hi there. How are you doing? This is a geodesic. Hey, this was, you show your voice. This was built by a Boy Scout troop. Wow. Are you part of the Boy Scout troop? No, you just came in. No, ma'am. The Boy Scouts are in the pack. There you go. 
I ran into some trail magic from Morel's trail maintainer. Just now finishing. So what? I'm gonna Morel's eat this, okay. get some water, and head on out. It's pretty um, cool. Chicken. I remember what was the discussion for for the day going down the shelters. Uh, this was uh, 0.2 miles off the trail, but I got trail magic. I got Gatorade, bags of chips, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I mean, uh, as we say, I got the hookup. So I'm gonna do nine more miles. It's 3:30. I should uh, I should put myself in there no later than 6:30, seven at the latest out here. By the way. 9 plus 14, that'll be a 23 mile date today when I'm done out here. Six miles out from the shelter, Harper's Ferry, 32 miles. Now that's Harper's Ferry, West Virginia. Harper's Ferry is not the border. The border is coming up here. And I'll be in West Virginia tomorrow. Nah, maybe not. But anyway, the border is less than 20 miles away. Less than 15, actually. Out here. This was my plan B. I was going to camp out in this field. But since it's so early, so 10 minutes till five, I just figure I'm just gonna go ahead and do the uh, do the nine miles out here. Six forty five, twenty three miles done. I'll show you the shelter. I'm gonna need a witness at some point, but I didn't say that. I didn't put this pretty much on the frequency. No way. Yeah, but you were thinking. Well, you can't blame me for thinking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <laughs>